Maybe. Okay, we've got the maxillary mandibular anterior set. Now we're going to move on to the posteriors. I'll try to do this uh, at least one side if in five minutes, so I'm going to move a little quick. So first thing you do before you ever set posteriors is you mark where the ridge is okay, on the land area of the cast. Okay? So I've already done that. And I want, it, I want the central groove of the mandibular posteriors to be right on top of that ridge, exactly. So I've got a line on there and I've got it extended here. While you're doing that, you also mark the occlusal plane, two thirds to midway up the retromolar pad. Mark that out here, extending from the incisal edge of where your anteriors are to that line. And then the third mark you make is where the ridge starts to make a steep rise right here. You mark it out here and that's as far posterior as you set teeth. If we have to drop a premolar, we will, but we're not going to set teeth on this rise. It's going to cause the denture to push forward. Okay. So back on here, I'm going to take this hard, cold wax off and I'm going to add wax on here okay, next before I go to set the teeth. I'm not going to try and set into that uh, fully set wax. I want something a little softer. So the trick to setting teeth again is to set in as little wax as possible because the more wax you have, the more shrinkage that happens and then the, you get the teeth set and they move. And we don't want them to move. So I'm gonna put some wax on here. I'm gonna kind of make it in a make it in a V shape and I want the top of that going right down the ridge, right where my lines are, because that's where where these teeth need to go. And then I'm gonna loop that down so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to break it up into a little wax for each tooth. So one for the first premolar, one for the second, one each for the molars. Okay, like that. Now I've got my teeth set up, arranged on my bench the way they go. You can tell by where, the way the writing is on the cards with the writing up. The occlusal surface is up for the mandibulars, occlusal surface is down for the maxillary. So they're going to occlude just about like that. Okay, so that's the way I've got them set so I don't mix them up on my bench. And these patients left side are going to go right on here and the right side are going right over there. So they're arranged on the cards for you. Okay, so I'm going to set the first premolar, keeping in mind that the proximal contact is not in the middle of the tooth, it's out on the buccal half of the tooth. We're lining the cusp ridge of the canine up with the flat zero degree where the cusp would be on this tooth. So that keeps that mandibular premolar lingual, not out here on the on the buckle. Okay, so I'm going to set it right next to there. I'm going to set it on the same plane, looking at where my wax rim is. Okay, and that's roughly, roughly where it's going to go. And then I'm going to move on and set the next one. Eventually here I'll check them with the metal plate because I want these mandibular teeth all on the flat plane for this lingualized occlusion, occlusal scheme that we're going to set. Lingualized occlusal scheme has lots of different ways you can do it, which is why it's usually not a board's question. Because it could be 33 degree teeth, which is what we're setting here against zeros. Some people want 20 degree teeth against zeros. Some people try and do a lingualized occlusion against 10 degree teeth. Dr. Massad goes around and lectures and sells his uh, special burrs that grind on the teeth and make them into more of a flat plane, taking out the little sulcuses. There's lots of different ways to do them and everybody's got their own opinion on it. But basically it's a flat plane mandibular against a cusped upper. Okay, so I've got those teeth, the central groove, going right down the ridge. That's what I want. If I put my ruler on there, lay it on where my reference lines are, that central groove is going right down the ridge. Okay, occlusal height okay, is, is determined by where my rat wax rim was, because I know that's the occlusal plane that I want, and it's extending to midway up the retromolar pad. Now I need to seal these down so they, so they don't move.
whether you set maxillary posteriors for first or mandibular, either way you're going to have a little adjustment to do at the end. Another method is to set the maxillaries first. We put a, we put a, uh, scribe a line on the mandibular bite block showing where that ridge is underneath and then we would set the maxillary lingual cusp on that line. So it would basically result in the central groove of the lower being directly over the ridge. They both do the same thing. You'll find that if you set the maxillaries first, you'll make a little bit of an adjustment buckle lingually. If you set the mandibulars first, like I am doing, I'm just sealing this down right now, you'll make an adjustment occlusal gingivally. Okay, so I want these teeth now to be exactly on the plane. So I'm gonna put the plane on there. I can take this off. Okay, I'm pretty close, but I'm not perfectly on it. The trick to do this now is to take a cold instrument, not to heat the wax back up with a hot instrument. Use a cold instrument and push the teeth up on the plane, like that. And we want buccal and lingual cusps on the plane. Now this wax isn't fully cool, so I'll have to recheck it but that's pretty close to what we're after. Okay, so I'll go on now and set the maxillaries to it. I also could go and do the other side. Either way, they've all got to be set. Okay, but I'm going to set the maxillaries to this. So the uh, lingual cusp of these cusped 33 degree upper teeth are going to go right in the central fossa of these uh, mandibular teeth. Once again, small amount of wax. Apply it to the ridge where the teeth are going to go. Seal it down. Now the maxillary teeth don't go exactly on top of the ridge because we got the palate to stabilize the whole denture. The mandibular teeth have to go right on the ridge. Exactly, perfectly. Okay. Then we set the maxillaries to them, to the mandibulars. When you set the first premolar, the tendency is to set it to buckle. Here again, remember that you're lining up the cusp ridge of the canine with the cusp ridge of the premolar. This tooth does not go, proximal contact is not way out there like that. It's in here like this. Okay. Set it up so the long axis is straight up and down in order to be in a flat plane. The buckle cusp is no lower than the lingual cusp. If anything, it's going to be a little above the lingual cusp. That's what lingualized occlusion is. So there's no interference of the buccal cusp in excursive movements. That's the whole idea of the lingualized occlusion. It's a glorified flat plane occlusion with some more, with a little more aesthetic teeth. Because the zero degrees are not a very aesthetic posterior tooth. They don't look natural. So we want the patient to be able to excurt in any, in any motion, in any forward, in the uh, protrusive, left or right working without having occlusal interferences that are going to dislodge the denture. Lingual cusp in the central fossa, buccal cusps raised up. Basically, the max layers are going to sit buckle a half a tooth so that the patients don't bite their cheek. The maxillary buccal cusp should not be touching in any way. Once again, these are generally set on a flat plane. The mandibulars are on a flat plane. So roughly like that. Then as the, te as the wax cools and the teeth shrink up out of occlusion a little bit, you can take a cold instrument 
don't heat the wax back up. Pop the tooth back down until they're in contact. So they're adjustable. If you've got a ton of cold wax on here, it's hard to move the teeth. That's it. I'm going to do the same on the other side.